Do you have some prayers that you haven't seen the answer manifested yet? Well, get ready. I've got good news. It's about to happen. Ladies, you know, when you're pregnant or you, and you know, you're expecting to have a baby, you go through different stages and phases. Amen. You go into what some like to call a nesting phase, so to speak, and you prepare the nursery. You pick out a theme of how you want the color of the room, the baby blankets, the baby clothes, and so on and so forth. And you have a due date that's been given to you by your doctor. So you get ready because you know it's about to happen. So hence is the title of this message that I have for you tonight. The good news is get ready. It's about to happen. So when you're pregnant, I want to say this to you right now. God said for me to tell you tonight that you're pregnant with possibilities. So get ready. It's about to happen. Those prayers that you've prayed those songs that you've sung. God wants you to have a readiness about your heart that you know it's getting ready to happen. God wants you to be expecting to see results. Expect God to do what his word said. I'm going to say that again, ladies. Let's expect God to do what his word says. God wants you to be expecting to see results. Sometimes I think we pray and then it's like, mm, maybe it's going to happen. Maybe it won't. Okay, sarah, sarah, whatever will be, will be. No, get ready. It's about to happen. Expect results. God wants you to be expecting to see results. Expect God to do what his word says. Amen. Like a pregnant woman, like I started off at the beginning of the message, like a pregnant woman expecting a baby, prepare yourself, get your house in order, do what you need to do so that when you receive what God has for you, you have a place for it. Amen. I want to say that again. I want to make sure I'm being clear. Prepare yourself and get your house in order. Do what you need to do so that when you receive it, what it is from God that you have been praying for, you have a place for it to be. Mm -hmm. So get ready. It's about to happen. In Psalms chapter 102 and verse 13, it says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. Can you say, my set time is come? Set come on, say, my come. set time is come. Get that in your spirit, that it's time. It's harvest time. You know, we, we, we plant the seed. You know, you put it in the soil. You water it. The sun comes along and up it comes up. So get ready. It's harvest time. Get ready. Get that in your spirit that it's about to happen for you tonight. Stop putting it off. No, get ready. It's about to happen. God wants us to have a heart of expectancy. If you're sick, expect the miracle. If you're needing a financial miracle, expect the finances to come in. Be looking for it. Say, God, I don't know how. I don't know how exactly you're going to do it. But I have a heart of expectancy based on your word. I know you're going to do it. So I'm going to get ready because it's about to happen. In Psalms chapter 1, 130 and verse 5 and 6, it says, I wait for, for the Lord. My soul doth wait. And in his word... Did you hear that? In his word, I do hope. I want to say that again. That's Psalms chapter 130 and verse 5. I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait. And in his word do I hope. 
What's his word? His word is the Bible. His word is what we feed on. His word is that substance. His word is what's covering what we've planted through prayer in the ground. We're covering those prayers with the word of God and we're expecting results. We're expecting the answer to come forth. Just as we plant the seeds in the soil, it gets watered, the sun shines, Jesus is shining on it. Think about it like that. And it's going to spring forth. Have a heart of expectancy. Amen. Luke 18 and 7, it says, And shall God not avenge his own elect? I want to read that again. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. God hears your prayers. God shall not. It says, and shall not God. That's why a lot of times I read the other translations, but I've got some King James mixed in here tonight. And shall not God. In other words, God shall have faith in and believe it. God shall avenge his own elect, which cry out day and and night. And you've heard me in messages before. I've told you we've got to be persistent. We've got to be persistent. We can't give up. Amen. We can't give up. And let's go to Luke 18 and 7. And let me read it from the message translation. You know, I have to have it broken down for myself. That's what I need. Let's go to Luke 18 and 7. You can turn with me there. I'm in the message translation. Luke 18, 7 and 8 in the message translation. Then the master said, do you hear what that judge, that corrupt judge? I'm sorry, I'm not sure what that. Then the master said, do you hear what that judge, corrupt as he is, is saying? We bind confusion in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for clarity of thought and speech. Luke 18, 7 and 8 from the message says, then the master said, do you hear what that judge, corrupt as he is, is saying? So what makes you think God won't step in and work justice for his chosen people who continue to cry out for help? Have you ever just cried out for help when you didn't know what else to do? Have you ever said, help? Lord, help, Lord. Here I am. Don't you see me? God sees you. Won't he stick up for them? It says, I assure you, he will. He will not drag his feet. But how much of that kind of persistent faith will the Son of Man find on earth when he returns? Did you hear that? Persistent faith. I know Sister Cheryl remembers we talk about that before in the message about being persistent. You've got to be persistent, ladies, in your faith. I want to read that verse again. That's Luke 18, 7 and 8. Get it in your spirit. Then the master said, do you hear what that judge, corrupt as he is, is saying? So what makes you think God won't step in and work justice for his chosen people who continue to cry out for help. Won't he stick up for them? I assure you he will. He will not drag his feet. But how much of that kind of persistent faith will the Son of Man find on earth when he returns? I want to be one of those ones that